Well, we have now progressed to the point where we're ready to install an upslope flashing on the back side of the chimney. Uh, we want to do this uh, probably out of a full width of coil stock. We want to make sure that at least this uh, upper portion of the pan comes at least 12 inches up the, the slope of uh, behind the chimney. Uh, notice also that we, I've got a piece of underlayment that I've woven up underneath this uh, top course of underlayment and I'm going to bring it down far enough that it's, it's going to lay on top of, of my flashing. I'm going to put an anchor strip across here as you can see that's going to allow me to fasten this shingle to go behind the chimney from the course on this side to the top lock on, on that side as well. I want you just to, to notice how this flashing is, is formed before I actually show you the uh, bend lines uh, on a piece of coil stock. Uh, you notice that we've got it uh, firmly seated into the kerf and again we're going to put sealant in the kerf first and then after putting the flashing in place come back and seal again on top. Notice that this flashing has uh, dog ears on both sides. I, I, I want to make sure that any water that does come down here is uh, diverted out to the side of the chimney. These particular dog ears are, go about two inches past the two sides of the chimney. I've got coil then that wraps around the back side of the, the dog ear and comes out alongside of the chimney itself. Uh, that way there's, there's no crack or anything to be sealed right here. Uh, the metal uh, seals that uh, intersection. Also, I'm going to, once I do install this, I'm going to want to make sure that I put sealant, a liberal amount of sealant right here where these two come together because that is a potential water infiltration point. Uh, lastly, notice here that I've got uh, two upturned hems on either side of, of the pan, so any water that does get here is channeled down, is diverted around the dog ears, and comes out on top of the shingles. Uh, here we have a perspective from the side of the chimney just showing how this uh, upslope flashing wraps around the side wall. Again, how we have the dog ear that comes into the intersection and then extends with a tab along the side wall. Again, this, there's no point for water infiltration there. I'm going to apply sealant up here at the corner. Uh, I'll, I'll apply a bead of sealant right in here and I have folded up this tab and this tab underneath so everything there is, is pretty tight. Okay, now I have cut a piece of coil stock that uh, will be used to fashion the upslope flashing and you notice that uh, the coil stock again is, is uh, about 10 inches wider. I made it 10 inches wider than the actual width of the chimney. So I have five inches on either side of the chimney. So this is the chimney width from here to here. The kerf height on the back of the chimney is represented by this blue arrow and it goes from the roof deck up to the place where the kerf is, is bent. I want to make sure that I don't put this up too high and, or I w won't be able to get it into the, the saw kerf. Here I have two inches out which is going to be the dog ear that extends from the side of the chimney. I have another two inches and I'm going to have a fold represented here in red that's going to go the opposite direction that's going to come alongside of the chimney here. And then I have a one inch tab that then is going to come alongside of the chimney. I'm going to cut to this point. Uh, the X's represent areas that are going to be cut out. And then my red line here represents the bend for the hem on the sides of the pan.
I kind of like to make these cuts in certain places a little, a little long. If, if I'm going to have a bend, um, the extra length on the cut helps me to, to line it up in the break. Again, I want to make sure that I only cut to this point, which is going to be the outer edge of the dog ear. Definitely do not want to cut all the way into there. I'm going to bend the blue line up at the top first and then recall that my red line at the base of the chimney will be bent the opposite direction. Going to over bend, the, bend this a little past 90 degrees because this is the back side of the chimney and I have to account for the roof slope. And the blue line here represents the outside of the dog ear. And uh, before I bend that all the way down, I'm going to come back. And bend here on the red line. This will be the tab that goes along the side wall flashing on the side of the chimney. Here in the corner I'm going to cut this um, corner up to the point that would be the roof plane. And then I'm going to bend this up first. And then come back and bend this along the roof line. And you can see how this is going to make for a nice tight uh, waterproof uh, flange there. One final detail here is to bend up uh, water stops, uh, a couple of hems on either side. Again, I just uh, like to make little slits. I don't want to crimp that all the way down, but um, I don't want it to stick up too far either and get in the way of the shingles. So, here we go. Now the, the only thing that's going to be left at this point to do is to set this in place and then I'm going to need to cut a slot right here in this tab in order for it to go on either side of this ledge in the sidewall flashing. Then slide it down into place and uh, seal right around here. Okay, now that we have the uh, uphill flashing in place, we're ready to go ahead and continue on our shingling across the back side of the chimney. Um, in order to do that, first I, again I want to make sure that I have underlayment that's brought down woven up underneath this top course and brought down onto the pan. And then I'm going to cut a piece of anchor strip or siding starter, depending on the product. Um, that is going to bridge this uh, distance across this back pan. And what I want to make sure is that the front leading edge of this anchor strip is right in line with the uh, top lock of this row of shingles and same thing on that that side and I'm going to make marks here where I have my nail holes because I'm just going to take my sealant gun and I'm going to put a dab of sealant where each of these nails are going to be uh, driven through 
the underlayment in the pan. That way, if I have any water that comes down the underlayment, it's going to go to either side of the nail hole protrusion. Notice too that I just brought this down just far enough to go to the bottom of the anchor strip. I don't want it to cover out here where it would be visible possibly from down on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and set my shingle in place here and I'm going to have to make a little notch out right here to go over that return hem about there to there. Now we have successfully bridged the distance across the top pan and are ready to continue with our shingling.